Good evening. Thank you for watching. We're live from Net TV Studios. I'm Lea Hogg with our weekly current affairs program in English. Today we take a look at Maltese enterprise, tourism and the environment. And my guest is one of the top business brains on the island at the helm of corporate enterprise for the last 40 years. I am with Mr. Louis Farouja. Thank you very much, Mr. Farouja, for coming here tonight. Thank you for your invitation. First of all, I was having a look at your book. Uh -huh. I think it's amazing. How do you do it all? Well, the actual writing of the book was also a number of people helped out. For instance, uh, Dr. Joseph Katsa, mm -hmm. who edited and wrote most of it. Dr. Katsa was a doctorate in political science and he was ambassador in a number of countries for Malta. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away three, three years ago to the day. Right. And I met him on uh, two days before he passed away, and we were going through the script. And uh, thank God his children continued the book. And uh, obviously, it was the result of a series of interviews that he did with me, and uh, over a period of a year and a half. Um, but he was my age, and at the same time, so he lived through the same periods, so he could fill in the, the gaps, shall we say. Yes, how amazing. It is amazing. But how do you do it all? I mean, can we go back to when you started, started in the family business? Yes. Um, well, my father was, as you may know, the founder of Farsons at a very young age of uh, 28, he built his first brewery in uh, Amrum. He was an architect and uh, obviously a good business brain. And unfortunately, he passed away when I was five years old. And my mother was half, half English. And, uh, and four years after he passed away, we went to live in the UK. Mm -hmm. So my career, my studies, education was conducted there, and I became a chartered accountant. I worked for Price Waterhouse, and I went to Italy. And finally, I came back to Malta in 1974. Uh, and I started working at the brewery and haven't left. <laughs> in July 1974, I walked in, and I've been working now in almost 50 years, 48 years, I think. Um, of which 42 were uh, at the helm. Mm -hmm. How enterprising can one be in a family business? Because there are limitations, of course. Yes, no, what it's all about is managing. You have to manage different, uh, shall we say, cohorts. You've got the employees, you've got your family, you've got the shareholders, you've got stakeholders, and you have to have a vision mm -hmm. for where you want to take the business. And you need the support of all those people, all those stakeholders. And um, I think I always say an entrepreneur is like an author of a book. An author of the book knows what he wants to write. He sees the story, the fold, and then gets down and writes it. An entrepreneur, an industrialist especially, will see the product he wants to produce and get, to get, get all the different ingredients together. So you need machinery, you need trained people, you need, you, you need to make sure that the consumer wants the product you want to produce. So you have to start from there. And it's like building bricks. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a building block situation. And I think that the skill is to, needed is to work all those uh, stakeholders together Mm -hmm. to produce the final product. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, your enterprise is a flagship for Maltese business. What's the secret, the secret to the success of it? Well, I, I think that we've been accountable to the public for, since 1929. So, because in 1929, it became a public company. It had, actually had shareholders. And uh, that makes you accountable. You have to produce accounts, you have to manage the business with governance, procedures, and that's ingrained in mm -hmm. the company and it's part of the culture. Mm -hmm. So 
I mean, it hasn't, it's not a new development that they, the EU directives are more onerous on public companies than ever before. When you, accounts of a public company today are full of not just financial information, but non-financial information, where you have to show your corporate social responsibility, where you have to um, even show the, the green credentials that you have. So c corporations are becoming more social entities, mm -hmm. not just profit. Mm -hmm. And that's a development of recent years. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to find a balance between profits and good governance? Well, having been through the last 50 years, I remember a situation in the 70s where private enterprise wasn't such a popular uh, enterprise. Then we went, to, then we started believing in it and privatization happened. And unfortunately, we didn't have the, the right governance procedures in place. Now, we have to do, keep up with the times, people, keep up with people's aspirations to make the, the, and the, the public companies more socially orientated. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously, shareholders are a very important part of the business. Without shareholder money, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So shareholders usually reinvest large sums of money into the business, which they could have taken out. In fact, it was a misconception that, that some of our workforce used to think 20 years ago, every time we declared, say, a million euro profit, I took them home with me. Yes. But yes. that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You keep the, the money in the business. Mm -hmm. And that's where the good governance comes in, uh, to give confidence to your shareholders. Yes, and, and uh, as I said, the EU directives are becoming more onerous. Um, as we speak, companies in Malta on the stock exchange are publishing results with details that were not revealed up to now. And I think it's making it for a better corporate uh, situation. Yes. How important do you think it is to invest in staff training and their development? Well, in, in the makeup of that enterprise that I described to you, you've got machinery, and today machinery is becoming more sophisticated, and you have to have workforce which is competent to run them. That means that they have to be trained. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, our workforce has changed completely. And uh, in the 70s, um, uh, we, we, we had a lot of manual labor. Mm -hmm because there was a lot of lifting of cases, putting bottles in cases. Now it's all done automatically, it's so much so that we even have robots in the, within the organization. So you need to have the training, and it's a very essential part of your HR function, human resource function. Do you think we lack uh, um, staff training in Malta? Yes, but, but if you want to compete, you can't compete with work workforce which isn't trained. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural conclusion. You have to train them. And uh, we are, we have a very close relationship with MCAST um, and a program of training apprentices. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it, you know, that's very important. Sure. Um, we've been uh, seeing some of your photos uh, mm -hmm. while we've been chatting. And I'd like to refer to the photo that we're, we're having a look now. That was a very special occasion for you. Could you tell us a bit more about it? Well, this was the 75th anniversary. We're, we're quite good at celebrating anniversaries. We've yes. just celebrated our 90th. This was the 75th in 2003. And uh, there, are, there are members of, the, of this, my chairman, Mr. Jera, and his wife, the President of, of the Republic, Dr. De Marco, and the Prime Minister, Dr. Venekadami, mm -hmm. and myself and my wife, and Mrs. Micheli, who was the, the widow of Ms. Mr. Micheli Faruja, who was my predecessor, right. chairman of the right. company. So the relationship we have at Farsons is that, we, although it's a family-orientated business, it's a mixture of professional people 
with family influence. Mm -hmm. Today we have a non-family CEO. Mm -hmm. uh, we only have two members of the family who work within the business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a formula which has evolved. Do you think that's vital to have the mix for a healthy business? Sorry? Do you think it's vital to have a mix of outsiders, new talent yes. and family? For I, I, think, I think that there's no alternative because you can't expect families to have all the management skills that, you know, some members of the family don't want to, you know, have different skills, have different um, uh, possibilities. They want to go down different routes. So you, you should only really employ members of the family who want to join the business and can fit in and stand on their own count. In other words, work with a professional team. Mm -hmm. That's our philosophy. Mm -hmm. I'd like to refer to what we're expecting post-COVID mm -hmm. um, for Maltese Enterprise. What is your vision going forward? Well, COVID is something that we've never experienced before. Uh, I've lived through quite a few things, but, uh, events in my life, but nothing like this. Um, I, think, I think we're going to win the, the battle, but it's a world, a world battle. It's not just EU or our own battle. It's no use us solving the problem if the rest of the world hasn't solved it. Mm -hmm. And, but it's an indication of the times we're in. You know, why, why has, I'm, not, I'm not medical, I'm not a scientist, but why did COVID happen? There must be you know, a sign of globalization, sign of, of people uh, moving around the world more than they used to before. Um, but we have to work with the science and obviously follow the science. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think we're at a stage now where the vaccines seem to be working and this all goes well. Mm -hmm. all what good. about tourism? Um, how is that going to kick start? Well, if you, if you examine what's happened to tourism and Malta tourism in the last 10 years, I was chairman of the Malta Tourist Authority in 2011 and it was the beginning of Ryanair. And we were in a sort of a hybrid of having tourists who come on package tours and tourists who started booking their own flights through the internet. Mm -hmm. Malta had, we started the idea of, of promoting Valletta as a historic site, as a short break. And I think this is the route forward that we use the digital revolution to encourage short break holidays for Malta and not necessarily two weeks, two week uh, holidays for the, the sun and the sea. Mm -hmm. I don't think our, our, assets, our assets are well equipped for long summer holidays, but I think we have many, many assets in terms of our history and culture for short breaks. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a hotel owner um, I'm just a, an observer, but I've seen, as, as most people today are their own travel agent. They go on, get on the internet, book yes. their holiday, book yes. their flight, and they don't have to go through a, to, a, to a travel agent. Um, so the digital revolution has caused this. Mm -hmm. The digital revolution has caused a change in tourism, a change in logistics, a change in manufacturing, all these uh, take-out foods that are happen, take-away foods that have developed, it's has suddenly given a long, a new lease of life to small little restaurants. Mm -hmm. So two things are happening in the world. One is climate change, and two is digitization. Yes. And the EU is encouraging companies and countries to invest in digitization. Mm -hmm. And. I think some of the recovery funds that they're promoting are there to encourage investment in this area. Mm -hmm. And again, if you don't do it, you'll be out of business. So that's, that's what's leading the world. The digital, the digital revolution 
is bigger than the, the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned climate change. Mm -hmm. I'd like to speak a bit about your new project, Trident Park. Mm -hmm. I saw a little clip while uh, we were uh, having a chat. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that? Well, this, this project happened because the old brewery that was built in 1950 became redundant as a building because we moved the operation to the south mm -hmm. because modern machinery, modern machinery required a different layout. So we always knew that we had a listed building because it's an Art Deco building. It's an iconic building. There it is. Um, that's a photograph that was taken in the early se late 70s with all the employees. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I joined 50 years ago. Um, uh, so, the, I've forgotten what I was going to say. <laughs> it's very environmentally friendly. Yeah, yes, okay. I think that was, um, that's one of the main, uh, the main focus of the building, isn't it? No? Yes, sorry. So, the, so this building, we went to international competition and we chose an architect who came up with the idea of obviously using environment as the, the, the most important part of it. So what we did is we retained all the colonnades and created seven stories of, and six courtyards between each of the stories. Mm -hmm. And that has given the building an environment, a new environment. But more than that, we're using thermal activated building system, which means we have 96 kilometers of pipe work going through the concrete where we're going to cool the building. We're not going to have normal air conditioning, but we're going to cool the building. And that's going to be with, with heavy insulation from the, on the, in the, in the, in the structure. So this is going to be a silent way of conditioning the business, the, the, the building. The building, it sounds, it sounds amazing. Um, we were speaking about uh, post-COVID. How can we be prepared for another disaster? I mean, how can we reduce the risks well, in the, businesses well, the, in the future? The because, I mean, some businesses weren't prepared not only in Malta, but abroad also. Well, I mean, the World Health Organization is obviously, must be looking at this mm -hmm. and be looking at with health systems. What's clear about COVID is that those countries that didn't have robust health systems have suffered greatly and thank God Malta has and we've performed very well. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, health systems are very, very important. Mm -hmm. And the investment we've put in over the years has come to fruition now. Yes, absolutely. What about online presence for businesses? How important do you think that is? Well, as I was saying, digitization. Yes. I mean, if you're not online, you're not in business. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got Many retail uh, outlets had no online presence in Malta and they suffered. Yes. And I, I think the retail scene is going to change. It has already changed in, on Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and that people buying online and you, you logistically you don't need to move the stock into a central city area to sell it. Mm -hmm. But I think that the jury is still out on exactly how much that's going to affect. But certainly people who own property in, in the center of, of uh, location cities in Europe are not being able to rent at the same rates that they could before. Absolutely. What, what are your thoughts on digital currency and, for example, Bitcoin technology? Well, I'm not, I'm not surprised with the digital coins um, because of the digital revolution. But I don't think central banks like the idea very much. And in fact, the value of a Bitcoin varies very greatly. I think yesterday it went down substantially mm -hmm. because of the Bank of China say they want to come out with their own digital currency. And the Bank of England also want to do the same. Mm -hmm. 
So I think it's inevitable that cash will not last forever. We are going to have digital cash, digital money. Um, and even checks are becoming obsolete, aren't they? Slowly. And they're already becoming so. Well, they, they still exist. Yes, it exists, but... But it's, it's unusual that people want to get paid, you know, usually transferring through, mm -hmm. through the internet is, mm -hmm. is more in demand. Mm -hmm. So you see the future of the Bitcoin, for example, as robust or... No, as I said, I th I'm, I'm not an expert. No, I'm but a, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of referring to Maltese businesses. I don't, I don't know enough about it except to say that there is obviously a demand because otherwise it wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, so something has to, if it disappears, something has to replace it. Mm. So if the governments come up with, a, with a, uh, their own schemes, then, then obviously Bitcoin will not, will not be the same. Mm -hmm. How important is it for people to buy local, local produce, local brands? Well, our company is, is made up of 100% Maltese owned, 100% Maltese managed, and now we have two Maltese brands, Kinney and Chisk, which are the mainstay of our business. When, we, when the markets opened up, all Maltese products that withstood competition became more respected. Not only that, but those people, those companies who produce Maltese products and improve them are still around. And if you see, go to a supermarket, you'll see Galletti, which are made in Malta, which are nicely packed. You see lots of foodstuffs, which are nicely packed. So I think what happened was that competition raised everybody's standard, and the, the Maltese businesses had to change. Mm -hmm. They've come so a long way. Come a long way. And you can't uh, say to people, buy it because it's Maltese, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's emo by appealing to emotion, mm -hmm. which may not... You know, the product is a product, and uh, they will they will definitely buy it if you uh, even satisfy them as a you know in, as in, as a consumer. Yes, yes. Um, just to close for today, Mr. Farooja, would you share a positive message with our viewers today going forward post COVID? We're seeing here also we're closing with a picture of th this is all your family members and your yeah. board of directors. This is a reunion we had of shareholders, families. So we have a lot of mouths to feed. But mm -hmm. uh, um, So we, that's a group which has an influence on the company but doesn't necessarily run it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we were celebrating an anniversary of sorts. So my message, I think, is I'm an optimist. I don't think you can be an entrepreneur if you're not an optimist. You have to believe. You have to never say die. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that was Alex Ferguson's comment in his book, Never Say Die. So just to carry never on. Give up, so never give up. Never give up. Thank you very much. I thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. I've been today with Mr. Louis Farouja. I thank you for watching. Please send any messages, comments, as usual, to the number you've seen on the screen. I'll see you next week at the same time. Good evening.